Hey everyone, welcome to Locked On Lakers for Wednesday. Brian Kamenetsky and Andy Kamenetsky. More KD news coming out of Brooklyn obviously impacts the Lakers. And ESPN has an early forecast for win totals for the Lakers. Is it slander or accuracy? That's next on Locked On Lakers. You are Locked On Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, sometimes on weekends, no matter how you get your podcasts or where. Always free, never behind a paywall. Uh, Locked On Lakers on YouTube is where you go to get the breaking news early and a visual version of the podcast. It's got some fun stuff in it as well. I uh, want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And finally, Andy, in the world of updates, once again, August 27th, Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Dewar Store, 170 South La Brea. We will be there taping a live episode, a special mailbag version of the Locked on Lakers podcast. You can be there. You can participate in the show. You can win some stuff, win some of the most comfortable pants, win some of the most comfortable shirts uh, that you will find on this and any other planet. Um, and if you want to participate in some giveaways we'll be doing with the Doer folks leading up to the show, you send us a question, hashtag Doer Show, D-U-E-R-S-H-O-W. can be about the Lakers, about the NBA, about anything that you want. Um, and if you, if you use that hashtag and ask a, us a question, we'll draw, uh, draw some names out and you have a chance to win a prize pack and be part of the show. So um, again, August 27th, 11 a.m., more details of that as we get a little closer. Another way, Brian, that you can be a part of the show, complain about us. A lot yes. of complaining about us going on right now in the Locked on Lakers YouTube community. Still appreciate you guys being a part of it. I mean, you are allowed to leave. Well, if you watch and you're leaving, you know, you're participating, you yeah. can you can complain all you want. It's fine with oh, me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We we are we're not blocking folks, we're not muting folks, we know we're not doing any of that stuff. No, as long as you, you know, decorum and all yeah, that. But, you, you know, if you're just a regular you just don't like me, sure. I mean, look, we, join the club. We got your view. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> you're, the important part of this transaction has already look, taken place. Let, you clicked. Let me, Podcast, uh, you know, we got you. Um, but you know, to to your point, Andy, um, there's been a, a rise in in um, comments that we've received that we are too negative, that we are not bullish enough on the team. You were even here for half this stuff, and a lot of it, quite frankly, I think people are angry at Mo DeKeel of the Athletic and Bleacher Report, who is quite bearish on the yeah. prospects for the team this year. But which I, I mean, Mo's our buddy. But if you're really that mad at Mo. Go track down Mo. He works for like right. eleven different companies. He's not hard. Mo to find. underscore NBA on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, um, like di direct it at the guy that you're actually pissed off at, as opposed to us. Right, you're actually pissed Mo. off at us. Right, but I will say this, and this is a, a perspective that Andy, Andy, I've been around this team and covering this team since what was our first year? I don't remember anymore. The 2005-2006 season. Uh, it was Phil's first season back after the one-year hiatus. Some affectionately refer to it as the Kush, uh, the Smush Kwame years. Right. <laughs> not very many people, but some, uh, at least not with affection. And so we've been doing this. Smush a long doesn't time. refer to it that way. And the, no, he's not a very <laughs> affectionate guy. No, <laughs> it doesn't sound. No, like not it. really. It doesn't radiate affection. No, we have. Um, we've been doing this a long time, and our attitude. You like our analysis. You don't like our analysis. We are. We have never been cheerleaders. We are not going to be cheerleaders. Um, it's the wrong show for you if you want cheerleaders. We don't doomcast um, for the sake of doomcast. No, no. Um, and we want the team to be. I see a lot of people say, oh, they want the team to be. No, we do not. And I will explain this to you on a few levels. First, we are basketball fans and been around the organization. We're Lakers fans. Andy's been a Laker fan, was a Laker fan for what? 15 years before you started doing you know anything related to the team at least um we you know we you know love it it's great for the city the city is fun you know more fun when when the team is doing well hell andy from a business standpoint the show is more interesting to do when they are good doom shows 
like last year got real old, folks. I'm not going to lie. Um, We're going to make more money if the team is good. Let's just be. I was getting there. I was getting to that. And finally, if you don't believe any of those things, I make more money when the team is good. Exactly. And there's there is no love for trolling. We make it rain when they win titles. There is no love for trolling that either of us could ever have that we would take above money. I can promise you that. Nope. Not even a little. Nope. Um, So. Please be rest assured that we are not rooting against the team. And the reason I have, I've been kind of down this summer is that I don't think they're very good. I don't think they're terrible. I think they can make the playoffs, but this is Los Angeles, Andy. And what, what do we, how do we talk about these things? We talk about them in terms of title contention. And there is just no way that you can convince me that right now they are title contenders. We are going to do, we've got some optimistic stuff coming up later this week things we think can go well uh that could help them this year but and we'll get to the win total that espn put out um later in 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 the show there's just no argument other than a pie in the sky rose-colored fan glasses you can put on that tells that says that this team right now as it's constructed is anywhere near as good as the three or four or five best teams in the in the Western Conference. I do not see it. I don't consider that trolling or that's just honesty people and that is what we provide. However, perhaps if uh things progress with the Nets a Did you just say way, however? <laughs> however, it's something that my wife and daughter say and I've just I've hear I've heard it okay. enough now that it's entering uh my vernacular. It's not like the Sakara read where you referred to breakfasts. No, well, that's because that's how you're supposed to say it, breakfasts. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's that's the word. It's the plural of breakfast. It's either breakfasts or breakfi. I will allow either one of them. <laughs> um, perhaps if things develop a certain way and you've got a butterfly effect from Kevin Durant re-emphasizing his desire to get the hell out of Brooklyn, perhaps that leads Kyrie Irving to the Lakers in a way that boosts their championship odds because, Brian, there is new news uh, along this front since the or last what time we, call we talked news. about this for Tuesday. Yeah, new uh, news. Since the, last, since the last time we talked about it for Tuesday's show. Yeah, uh, you may remember, Andy, uh, Kevin Durant gave the ultimatum. It's either management, you know, Sean Marks, GM, coach uh, uh, Steve, Steve Nash, Nash, or me. You can have... Mm-hmm. Uh, him, them, or we can have me. You cannot have both. Joe Sy, the owner. Well, of- you can't have both and me be happy. Happy. Right. Me want to stay because you know. Let's let's make it clear, Kevin. And we're going to discuss this. Kevin Durant being unhappy does not mean that he automatically gets to leave. Like, there's no CBA rule that says if you're unhappy with your team, uh, your owner and general manager are automatically obligated to move you. Right. Contrary to perception, you certainly can't get paid in that process. You're not be like, "Ah, I'm just moving on. Um, So, and and so Joe Sy, uh, we, we, our, 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 I thought on, you know, certainly for Tuesday's show was that um, Joe Sy would take this ultimatum and he would support Steve Nash and Sean Marks and they would go from there. And later in the day, you know, after we had finished recording, that's what happened. Joe Sy tweeted out, you know, I'm, I'm supporting our guys. His uh, exact meaning, words were our front office and coaching staff have my support. We will make decisions in the best interest of the Brooklyn Nets. Right. Meaning we're not firing those guys for you, Kevin Durant. And this, also, though, and this is really important, that we will be making our decisions based mm-hmm. on what we think is best for the health of the franchise as opposed to the happiness of Kevin Durant. There were a lot of people who took that information, you know, comments on the chat board, people hitting us up at Cam Brothers, to mean, well, all right, like things are going to be in motion now. Like you can't, this is, it's officially untenable in Brooklyn. And that is potentially half right and at least in my opinion i will explain which half next 
Locked on Lakers brought to you by Doer, the sponsors, the exclusive sponsors of the Locked on Lakers podcast. It is just this show in the network, and they are the purveyors of the world's most comfortable pants. Uh, reminder again, August 27th, we are doing a bonus Locked on Lakers episode at the Doer store in LA, 170 South La Brea. Um, there's going to be a giveaway. Send us your questions. Hashtag Doer Show. That will put you in uh, the entry to possibly win one of these giveaways of their awesome clothes, some of the most comfortable clothing you will ever wear, some of the most versatile clothing you will ever wear. It's clothing created with the belief that comfort, style, and function all exist to complement each other in design. So you can wear a pair of doer pants at work after riding your bike to work. Then you can ride your bike to a restaurant to have dinner with friends afterwards, all in the same pants. And they'll, and the this is important. They'll still look good throughout the entire process. Oh, yes, they will. won't look all schlumpy and gross. No, they're going to look The pants are going to hold up, and it's going to look good, and that's the important thing. Yeah, plus two. They're made with ultralight tensile. Uh, It's moisture-wicking and antibacterial, which means, by definition, all of your other clothes, they can't fight bacteria, which means everything else you're wearing that isn't doer is gross. (laughs) So, again, go to the store, 170 South La Brea uh, Avenue in Mid-City in Los Angeles, if you happen to live there, otherwise, go to shopdoer.com. Either way, use the exclusive code for our listeners. You guys, you gals, 15% off at Locked On 15. Again, 15% off using the promo code Locked 15. Go to the Doer store, 170 South La Brea Avenue, or shopdoer, D U E R.com. Locked on Lakers also brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, combat sports, esports. Andy, do you gamble on esports? That seems to me uh, to be something uh, that I, I wouldn't do well. Uh, even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top. I prefer to bet on things I know nothing about. <laughs> Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts that got you covered, including a great place to go to kind of check up on what uh, Vegas thinks about the, the, the landscape of the NBA season based on all this KD stuff that we've been kicking around for a while. Head on over to bet online today. Use your mobile device to learn about the action uh, and bet online. It's where the game starts. So I, I will tell you, Andy, why I think people have this half right. Um, and why I think they have it half wrong. Um, It may have, in fact, reached an impasse. They may have reached a place in Brooklyn where Kevin Durant's relationship with the team is untenable, and it's just not going to work. I mean, that is a big-time ultimatum. I'll stay, but you got to fire the GM and the coach. You are basically just being like, hand me the the cojones of your franchise in a bowl and I'll, I'll no, 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 I'll no, no. It's not hand me the cojones of your franchise. It's hand me your cojones. cojones Josiah, yes. Like your actual cojones. And by the way, that is going to be the, uh, the viewpoint of anybody that Joe Sai would be looking to hire. Right. After why would uh, I walk into this again? When right, you're, exactly. you don't even own the team, Kevin Durant, I'd does. like to keep my cojones. <laughs> Thank you very right. much. Joe Sai, you know, like him, dislike him as an owner, but it did not become a really rich guy um, by putting his cojones in a bowl and giving it to Kevin Durant. No. Um, it's a hell of a key part <laughs> Because though. that would, let's be honest, <laughs> that would be a really weird way to get rich. Yeah. Very specific, very weird. Um, it's big so, in the 70s. <laughs> so are key parties. I, I said a key party earlier. You were talking oh. over me. Well, I do that. <laughs> I just like, to, I just go. Mm-hmm. So, it may be true that the relationship is untenable at this point, but that doesn't mean that Durant is going to be out the door quickly. Um, and it doesn't mean that once Durant is out the door, that automatically Kyrie Irving is going to be following quickly. Those two things are not the same. Yeah, I, it's, I think it's just going to be really fascinating to see where this goes. And, and this... Our viewpoint on this, because I think you and I feel pretty similarly about this, may in part be colored by having been so up close to Kobe's trade demand, because that was in the summer of 2007, way more 
public, way more on the record, awkward, ugly than this so far has even come close to getting. Like they're they're not even in the same stratospheres. But also, too, we just saw Daryl Morey with the Sixers say to Ben Simmons, look, you want to sit, sit, and we'll figure out the fining and it'll go to the league and whatever. And you may end up losing a money, a bunch of money in the process, but we're not moving you until we get what we want. And as it turned out, that was James Harden. The Nets may just say, look, KD, if we can find a deal that you like, I mean, that we like, we'll do this. Mm -hmm. Until then, you're an employee of this team. You're going to be coached by Steve Nash. You're going to be part of an organization run by Sean Marks. If you don't like it, sit out and we'll invoice you. But in, until then, just this is the deal. You are under contract for four years unless you're going to sit out and – Really, I don't think Durant's going to do that, but like you don't have any leverage here. Like Kevin Durant has no real leverage in this situation. Like, I'm not even sure either team has as much le or either side has as much leverage as they like. But other than just creating discomfort, which isn't going to last for four years, Durant doesn't have a ton of leverage either. No. And, you know, and Kyrie has all the incentive in the world to. Play ball. Play ball because he's he's trying – he's said they're all the right stuff uh, because he's got a career to resurrect. And I don't – I can't <laughs> – I don't know me, for Brian, sure. Reminds me a bit. We're going to talk about this. Uh, potentially Russell Westbrook and yeah. his relationship with the Lakers and specifically Darvin Ham. Yeah. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot of this that's been, you know, that – I, I can't say for sure. I don't know that the Nets won't trade Kyrie before they trade Durant. They could, I guess. Um, it seems to me it makes much more sense to do it the other way because you need to, your your best return for Kyrie, whether that means keep him and maybe it works out and you you do something in the offseason, Um you know, uh, trade him or whatever is going to be based around the tr tra uh, franchise transform transforming trade that you make with Durant. It just seems weird that they would do it the other way until they really have to, which certainly isn't before the season based on the news that we have now. Um, and so I don't, even this response from Joe Sy, I still don't know how much it really changes the landscape of the the deal other than making it seem more likely that Durant eventually gets traded as opposed to I think Brooklyn's previous um hope or plan which was let's just sort of ignore it like the Lakers essentially started to do with Kobe which is like yeah we're just going to ignore all this and pretend it didn't happen go play and by the time you know, things were going well. Even before the Pau Gasol deal, the Lakers were the best team in the Western Conference thanks to the play of Andrew Bynum, who Kobe wanted shipped somewhere for, you know, so, so the Lakers could get Jason Kidd. And so th even that plan to me still doesn't sound totally implausible. There's no, the Nets could still do that, like you say, as long as Durant's going to show up to work. Yeah, you know, a couple things before we move on to uh, Russ and Darvin Ham. Uh, Brian Windhorse was on one of the ESPN shows, and he and he brought up a couple things I thought were interesting. First of all, he noted that Durant saying these things to Joe Sy in this recent meeting was him looking to apply pressure, and he said, "quote Obviously, it wasn't that effective because Joe Sy, uh, within a matter within a matter of hours after it becoming public, revealed that he's rejecting that request." You're referring to the, the tweet that he sent out. And this may have just been f awkward phrasing by Brian, but in terms of rejecting the qu request, he wasn't clear if he meant the request to fire Sean Marks and Steve Nash, but it could also be the overall request period, or like we've been talking about for now, if nothing else. But Winhorst also, and I thought this was really interesting and something I know we've talked about before with KD at large. He, he said that he thought the timing of these specifics were unusual because to the best of his knowledge, and you know he's pretty plugged in, these details were not expressed at exit interviews by Durant. Durant actually went pretty strongly to bat for Nash publicly during his exit interviews. 
And at the time of his original trade request, these things weren't stated, which mirrored a lot of people saying, and this came up with uh, Adam Armbrecht when I, I had him on while you were on vacation, Brian, the co-host of Locked on Nets. Like the Nets not even really being sure exactly why Durant wants to leave in the first place. And these specifics coming now, out now are kind of weird because they don't really match up to what he said. And it just, it got me wondering if just KD ultimately just doesn't like it in Brooklyn the way he thought he would, kind of like he thought he'd like it in Golden State before eventually leaving a situation that everybody in the world thought was incredible. And he can't just say, like, I want to trade because, meh. <laughs> so, right. you know, trade no, me. Got, but a, so he's a, like trying to make this about something. Something. It's just the whole thing is weird. And it it it's hard to believe that in some ways, like, the the star who has hurt his trade leverage most based on attitude and behavior, if you're talking about the Brooklyn Nets, could be someone who isn't Kyrie Irving. <laughs> like, but this the stakes of this deal with four years, you know, on it, and he's 34 years old, and this sort of growing track record of, and I love Durant. I mean, I, I you know certainly love him as a player. There's a lot about kind of his willingness to talk to people that while I find maybe not healthy for Durant, I kind of find sometimes just refreshing from an athlete. Like he's reaching a place where you, you wonder how much people want to get in the Kevin Durant business, which is crazy because he's still at worst, like the third best player, fourth best player in the NBA. It is crazy. You know, so I, I, how this finishes and just as importantly, and I, I don't have to unpack it now, but like we've, we've mentioned it a couple times and I just think it's worth, kind of keeping alive as a theme throughout the rest of the season in the next few what this does to the way that teams look at stars and sign them and which guys and when and at what stage of their career like so much is going to be different going forward i don't think it's going to take a a rule change in the cba it's just a culture change and i think the culture of the nba um is is forever different because of the ways in which the Nets and Lakers have failed over the last couple seasons. It's really possible. I mean, the flip side of this is always going to be stars are stars and they're really hard to come by. There, you know, But there might be a middle ground. That there's something to that, like, right, yeah. Where to where you just aren't willing to do literally anything for these guys anymore. Um, all right, so I know I mentioned the, uh, the, the ESPN and their forecast for the Lakers, but um, a, something that we've been meaning to get to for a couple of days, so we might just save this until Thursday, uh, the, the, the ESPN thing. Uh, Russell Westbrook, Darvin Ham, uh, who's got permission to sit Russ if need be? That's next. Uh, people made a big deal out of Frank Vogel and uh, whether or not he was able to sit Westbrook where he could bring him off the bench, what kind of leverage he had for all that. Uh, there was uh, some interesting reporting from our friend Jovan Buha at The Athletic saying that there is speculation that with Darvin Ham at the very least, he will have more freedom and flexibility uh to uh to do things like that with russ to bring him off the bench to uh to play him less to have him not end games all that stuff um that ham can do he will have more freedom to do those things um we didn't get a chance to talk to this Andy, because you were out of town i i think people are kind of misreading what this means and why i'm curious what you thought when you read it well, I mean, when I read this from Jovan, and this was part of the mailbag that he does for The Athletic, and, and you know, Jovan does fantastic reporting on the Lakers in general. You, you should follow him on Twitter. You should subscribe to The Athletic for, for his Tremendous content. hair. Yeah. Oh, God, he's got good hair. He has some great hair. But um, what I found interesting about this, because, you know, it was, it was questions about Darvin Ham's, uh, Darvin Ham's autonomy in mm -hmm. these sort of situations, and – it was very well reported last season, and we saw actual evidence of it during games, that Frank Vogel had the ability to also, if nothing else, bench Russell Westbrook down the stretch of games. And this was something mm -hmm. Russ didn't like, and he made it known that he didn't like it. But it happened on a few occasions. And I think there was a lot made out of the idea that Vogel, there was a report that Vogel had gotten permission to do this 
and you know the the idea of a coach needing permission for this and you know the the idea that Vogel would have to like essentially go to his parents <laughs> in order for the or I guess go to Russ's parents in order for the permission to ground him uh, metaphorically speaking but like the truth is this is part of superstar politics and right. Darvin Ham if he's emboldened to do this that's the same thing as getting permission whether that permission was told to him during an interview process or this came up with Frank Vogel you know talking with Rob Palinka and Kurt Rambis or whoever about the situation and they're saying look we got your back either way this is something that Vogel was able to do and ironically and, but I was well go ahead finish I'm sorry ironically was often the guy standing in the way of it there were multiple re reports that Vogel was actually the guy despite a little bit of pressuring from like Palenka and Rambis and other people keeping Westbrook on the floor at the end of games, not or, or in the, the starting, starting lineup line. and things. Like that. Exactly. I, be honest with you. I don't entirely buy some of those things. I think it is in the Lakers best interest, obviously to say um, that, you know, this is something, of course our coach has the autonomy to do those things. Well, I'll tell um, you why I do buy it. Because I think by now, if it weren't true, this would have come out from leaks uh, per team from Vogel. from from Vogel side, yeah, and yeah. I and, and so, so that's like, why I, I do believe it. But but the, the next part I was going to say about that is I also think that Vogel's reasoning behind it certainly you know for through the first you know people were like he should come off the bench at the beginning of the season or all this like you know when they got off to a, a tough so it's like his reasoning behind that to you know keep him in the lineup and keep trying to pump it up and all that was sound and the and. The difference is context. Vogel is in the beginning of theoretically a two-year relationship with Russell Westbrook. And looking like he's in a one-year relationship with the Lakers. Right. But so, you know, he's he's got a different sit, set of circumstances to work with. You know, th this looks like something that isn't necessarily going to try to be over. And also, too... Based on what they had as a team, first of all, injuries made it so Westbrook was going to have to play half the time anyway. But if they were going to maximize the what they could be and the design of that team, they had to figure out how to unlock Russ, as ugly as it would be and as painful as it would be, and it as ultimately didn't work. The difference is now, I don't. It doesn't matter what happens to Westbrook this year, whether he plays ball or doesn't play ball. The over the odds overwhelmingly are that he won't be here next year. Darvin Ham's got short of winning contract. MVP next year. Russ is not going to be on the or team just the transforming season. himself into this sixth man of the year type thing or going through some sort of metamorphosis that nobody sees coming that is due to Darvin Ham's intervention. Okay, is that possible? Sure. Am I counting on that? No. And so, short of something like that, where he just transforms completely this year, sees the light, comes to Jesus, and all that other stuff. He's not going to be here next year. Darvin Ham has a five-year contract. He will be here next year. Darvin has zero incentive to do anything with Russ that plays into the politics or Russ's attitude or whatever it is beyond what do I think I can do to maximize Westbrook um, and do I think it'll work and I can try it. And if it doesn't, I can move on. It's really in Russ's best interest to make these adjustments and do whatever it is that the Lakers ask him to do. And like Kyrie, be a good fit in the organization and a great employee and whatever, because he's the one with the incentive to try to, 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 to extend his career. I just don't think he's got the self-awareness right now to do it. I mean, look, Russell Westbrook has always been staunchly stubborn about who he is as a player and wanting to play the way that he does, that he thinks both accentuates his talents best and also just reflects his basketball worldview. He is not really big on adjusting. He is much bigger on you adjust to him. But at the same time, like, you know, he just had his longtime, very close agent, Thad Fouché, publicly and really unprecedentedly break up with him over essentially you don't seem like you want to just do what's in your best interest, which is be a starter under Darvin Ham 
and do what your coach is asking you to do. And by the way, extend your career in the process. Because, I mean, this reminds me a lot of potentially Allen Iverson at the end of his career when AI was still a productive player, but he was not the guy that he used to be and wasn't fitting in ways that that he needed to at this stage of his career. And he refused to do anything different. And it cost him years in the NBA. And Russ is at a true crossroads at his career. Like he really Completely. is. Like, like we talked about this, Brian. If he gets moved and bought out, there are few, if any, teams that you can look at and say he makes sense for, even at a veteran's minimum. I don't think it's a given he's going to get picked up by someone. I don't. It's I, I think he probably would, but you're right. It's I maybe I don't know. And but I will say this: you know, you talk about his like there's still runway here in terms of his career. Like there are dollars, there are years, there are, you know, all the stuff. And if he wants to keep playing, you know, that, that can be a powerful incentive. We'll just, we'll see how it goes. But um, this is, this is less about, you know, Vogel versus ham um, or even the Lakers and their direction to their coaches as is just context. You know, yeah. Darvin ham doesn't need Russell Westbrook in the same way that Vogel did to try to get where they're going and has a totally different incentive structure. So um, we did not get to uh, the Lakers and ESPN's projected win total. Uh, we've got a, a player that has been linked to the Lakers that we haven't had a chance to talk about that we'll do that. And we've got some optimistic stuff that our friend Alex Regla at Silver Screen and Roll, a guest on this show uh, while I was out of town with you, Andy, um, wrote about Austin Fans Reed, liked so him. Want to get to Listeners yeah, and the viewers liked nice Alex. Say. Um, so still a lot more to come on the show throughout the uh, through the week. Uh, Locked on Lakers on YouTube is where you go to see the show. Locked on 15 is the code you use at shopdoer.com or inside the Doer Store 170 South Bray to get the pants. We'll see everybody on Thursday.